Let's talk about the comp T gene. That is catecholamine methyltransferase. It breaks down two things. And for sake of sight, we normally correlate it to breakdown of dopamine, but you, all, you can also correlate to breakdown of estrogen. So this is just a, a um, animation uh, trying to explain dopamine in the frontal lobe. That's where it's most important when it comes to psychiatry. The COMT comes, breaks it down, and you got dopamine degradation. But yeah, that sounds pretty simple and all fine and dandy, but it has a significant impact on patients. Because you can't just say, oh, they're comp T and you know, this is what we do. No, you have to look at which way they go. So this is fun. The low comp T is what I call the warrior gene. It is known as AA slash met met, meaning you have slow metabolism of dopamine and estrogen. What happens when you have high dopamine? Worry, anxious, you're obsessive, you can't tolerate stress, don't like change, and you can be psychotic. I find this a lot in schizophrenics. When it comes to schizophrenics, they are really hard to treat. But if you know this, you can talk about tampering the dopamine gene, not just with antipsychotics, but perhaps with beta blockers and alpha-1 agonists. And I have a patient with that cocktail, really bad schizophrenia. Once that cocktail was done, and the patient was stable on it, no more anxiety, no more psychosis. The clinical impact of treating low comp is not just to say dopamine blocker, which is, you know, you, sh you should start with that if the patient could tolerate and if they would agree to it. Because a lot of times patients won't because that's an antipsychotic doc. I'm not crazy. I don't have psychosis. Why would you give that to me? I have to explain to them, listen, you run high dopamine, this is the way to bring it down. I'm gonna talk about also natural ways in the end, but sometimes when they're like having breakdowns, you gotta go. You know, we don't forget in general psychiatry that we have to treat the symptoms as it is right now, or else it will lead to a bad outcome. So I'm not against using psychiatric medicines in the meanwhile, because that'll work a little bit faster than the quote unquote holistic way of treatment, because you gotta bring down the crisis. What happens when you have high estrogen? You get moody, you overreact. Women get this way pretty bad when you have too much estrogen. I don't wanna say that this is a bad thing all the time. You, I find that low comfy people are very good. They're reliable. They remember everything, but sometimes they don't always play well with others because they are set in their ways. And if you move anything, kind of like who moved my cheese, it's not good. And these people cannot tolerate too much stress in a work environment. You wanna pile on things for them and they don't wanna say no. And then what happens? They quit their job. They're like, they can't function. They're anxious. They can't make it. I, I like to tell my patients this. Once I figure out they have the warrior gene, I say, your prescription is don't take on anymore what you're doing right now at work. And you tell them, this is what my doctor told me. So it empowers people to say, you know, it's not just about medicines. It's about wondering what the level of stress you could deal with in life. So these are the things that you can see low comp to eat. Anxiety, you know, too much dopamine. You're anxious. Social anxiety, panic disorder, OCD. They're very obsessive. May not be to the point that it's clinical, but they like things the way they are. Don't move it. Don't touch it. And if you, if you let them be that way, they'll be fine. Autism. This is interesting because autistic people are not antisocial, or, and meaning that they don't want to be around people. They're just anxious. They just don't know how to connect, but they desire it. So treating the low comp T in autism, if they have it, brings down the anxiety, 
brings up their socialization. I've seen this in my patients who say, yeah, I have autism. I said, okay. And I'm, I'm at a point where like those diagnoses in the DSM criteria, they're great and dandy. They help me figure out what the patient is, but that's not the end of it because I look at their genes and I can understand why. So yeah, PTSD, you know, hyper reactions to any trigger and re-trigger. If they run high in dopamine, that's gonna happen. Bipolar disorder. There are times when, yeah, the dopamine is way too high. What happens? They get manic, they get psychotic. And I already talked about schizophrenia. PMDD, you know, right before a woman has her cycle, the estrogen can run high and it's already high. So that's why these women suffer more from PMDD. Postpartum, we always talk about a woman glows during her pregnancy. That in bipolar disorder, we were always told bipolar disorder is protective in pregnancy. Why? It is hormonal. After you deliver, you have that drop in progesterone that was keeping you calm, and now you don't have it. Now that you understand the impact of the neurotransmitter in a patient, every symptom that they have makes sense. So how do you treat it? It's a three-prong approach, and I'm going to talk first about the natural approach or the non-medication approach. Diet. You eat more cruciferous vegetables, black seed, soy, oat straw, low protein diet. Why do I say that? Because amino acids make dopamine. So I'm not saying that you can't have protein. I'm just saying be careful. Don't be going crazy and talking about I'm going to go on keto <laughs> because that's not good for you. It's not, it's going to make you not sleep. It's going to make you anxious. This is exactly the story of the psychologist who went through the same thing. And um, that's what happened. You know, like she wasn't feeling good. So she doubled down on her keto, doubled down on her cardio exercise or exercise in general, ate more berries and she crashed and she didn't understand why. Obviously you wanna avoid alcohol or drugs. You can have people who have low comp T who struggle with alcohol or drugs. But when I ask them, how do you feel when you do that? I feel terrible. But that's the only way I know how to like cope with life. Another prescription for them. You can't have alcohol or drugs because it will elevate your dopamine. And why is it you should avoid berries? Berries are what we call phenols. Phenols make dopamine. So I, I'm talking about exercise. You should use more relaxation exercise, exercises. Yoga, Pilates, in the beginning, you should avoid vigorous exercise, cardio interval training. I do have patients that I do recommend these things, even if they're low comp T. You can have the ability to exercise and do interval training, even with low comp T, but everything else has to be balanced, especially your hormones. So these are the supplements, mainly antioxidants. Your vitamin C, D, zinc, glutathione, lithium, magnesium. Um, these things balance the effects of the dopamine in mm -hmm. the brain. And with too much dopamine, what do you need to do to compensate it? You need to compensate it by increasing the serotonin. And you can give an SSRI, but I like to start with the building blocks, tryptophan. But I prefer mostly 5-HTP because tryptophan will quit working in the long run. It's a short-term um, treatment. 5-HTP will not quit working. It doesn't build that blockage, continuing to make serotonin. GABA promoters, you know, anything that will bring down the anxiety through GABA and pregnenolone. And why pregnenolone? Pregnenolone increases GABA naturally in the brain. So think about this. Why do women in their 40s and 50s, when they go to a doctor and say, I have anxiety and I need my Xanax? It's because in normal physiology, the pregnant loan goes down because we don't, you know, your body is saying you don't need it that much. But we've come to realize that there is so much more psychiatric benefits when it comes to 
hormones, even pre-hormones. So I talked about phenols. Phenols make dopamine. And these are the things that can make dopamine. Green tea, curcumin, quercetin, amino acids, even L-methylfolate, SAM-E, and high-dose B vitamins. I don't think I even really have to explain to you why you have to avoid these things. Because I, I showed you the methylation cycle. With the methylation cycle, B vitamins, SAM-E, those are the things that are involved in making other than serotonin, dopamine, and norepinephrine. So let's talk about the psychiatric meds for low comp T. Um, of course, the first thing I like to reach to is antipsychotics, but if the patient flat out refuses, then I can give them a beta blocker if they can tolerate it. Alpha agonist, meaning the clonidine, the guanfacin, and GABA promoters. As you notice with anxiety, giving them more GABA is going to decrease the effects of dopamine. Benzos, buspar, seizure medicines. And out of the, all the antidepressants I like to give are the SSRIs because it does promote the increase in serotonin. I would avoid anything with SNRI because it has norepinephrine, even the older medications, the TCAs, those are what we call like dirty SSRIs and MAOI inhibitors. Those are all will help the body make more dopamine. So SSRIs is the way to go. First line. It makes sense now why we, we would avoid Wellbutrin because it does increase dopamine, the SNRIs, the TCAs, MOIs, and stimulants. Stimulants are, are not good um, for people with low comp T in general. The ADHD medicine that I use in low comp T that I reach for so long as they tolerate it is Intuniv because this is the reason why Intuniv will work for some people. It will not work for people who are opposite. In fact, it makes them worse and depressed because you're blocking that receptor already. For more information, this website, berkeleywellbeing.com slash comp program. This was the program I was talking about, about that psychologist who kept doubling down on her dopamine, thinking that was gonna help her. And then she crashed. She actually has a good program that you can tell patients to go to. It's not necessarily step by step, but general guidelines on the things that you need to do in your life to decrease the effects of dopamine. She also engages the effects of estrogen in the recommendations she does, because we can't forget that.